the Marines, nothing in this city is quite what it seems. A family man with a phone, wires, rubber tubing, all possible bomb-making equipment. Gunshot residue on his hands. See that turn like that color? Is that the specs? Yes. Definitely been firing a weapon in the last couple of days. Hey, so what's going on? About 100 meters down, there were two guys turkey peeking. So they did that two or three times. It's a clip from the documentary Only the Dead See the End of War, which debuts Monday night on HBO. And joining me now is the man behind that film, Michael Ware, who, starting in 2003, spent seven years covering the war in Iraq for Time and CNN, where he used a handheld camera to capture hundreds of hours of footage of what was happening on the ground. Michael, it's great to have you here. Um, just coming over the wires, Iraqi security officials say a suicide bomber has attacked the football stadium south of Baghdad, killing 29, wounding 60. It looks like ISIS is claiming responsibility for this. Of course they are, yeah. And this is, you know, it struck me when I was in Brussels, um, ISIS released an infographic of their martyrdom operations for the week, and there were 12. Yes. And the only one I knew about... Was Brussels. There had been 11... Yes. ...of that happening throughout Syria and Iraq. Look, it's a constant drumbeat of death that's going on in Iraq and Syria. You know, what is extraordinary for us, because of the size of the carnage in Paris or the, the shocking nature of, you know, the most recent attacks in Brussels, that's the Iraqis' almost daily life. And no one outside of the country really cares. And no one outside of the country is really keeping tabs. I remember there was a day in Baghdad at the height of the war you know, the man who created the Islamic State unleashed 11 bombings in that one city in one day alone. And it hasn't got that frenetic pace now, but the blood continues to flow, you know, a couple of times a week. The film sort of looks at two things. One of the things, the sort of main narrative arc, is, uh, is about uh, Abu Masab al-Zarqawi, yes. who, in the, in the pantheon of... of terrorist figures is, mm -hmm. is, is possibly the most brutal and savage of them all. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. You know, this is a man, because, look, this is the man who created the Islamic State. Right. Which, you know? which was al-Qaeda in Iraq when he no, created it. No, no, it was something before that. Oh, that's look, right, that's right, yeah. The Islamic State has had like four or five different name right, changes. Right. It's had four different leaders. It all began with Zarqawi. Let's never forget yeah. that it, we're the ones who unwittingly That's and right. inadvertently unleash the Islamic State upon ourselves and upon On the, the world, world with the invasion of Iraq. Now, no one could have seen that coming. It was impossible right. to predict, but it's a direct result. Now, Zarqawi had a vision of holy war that was so barbaric, so violent, and so unrelenting that he terrified Osama bin Laden. And, in fact, they were rivals. And we have, we have correspondences, essentially, from Al-Qaeda Central saying, you are a psychopath, cut it the hell out. Absolutely. They, you know, the current leader of Al-Qaeda, Ayman al-Zawahiri, wrote an open letter to Zarqawi saying, you know, bless your work, but dial down the carnage. And each time that happened, he turned the doll straight back up. And, and what we have, I mean, the Pandora's box was opened by the destruction of the Iraqi state, which was precipitated directly, unequivocally, by the American uh, invasion of Iraq. Mm -hmm. That carnage has reverberated through. It has given rise to the Islamic State. And one of the things I think that comes through really well in this documentary is what it means to be drenched in that kind of trauma all the time for yeah. society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what does it mean? Well, this is the thing, you know... Now, obviously, we're in the, you know, silly season of politics with the presidential campaign, and it's very easy from behind a podium to talk about taking the fight and sending troops and doing all of these things. I saw what it cost our children when they had to reach out and touch a darkness like the Islamic State, even to combat it. Mm -hmm. You know, we have the dead, we have the maimed, we have the living dead. And it shaves away at the soldiers and marines' souls having to fight something like this. And let's not forget the Iraqis. We have now... Hundreds of thousands of whom have died. Of course, but think about the living too. 
I remember during the height of the Civil War, kids that walk out the front gate and turn left to go to elementary school and they'd come across a beheaded body, most likely someone from the neighbourhood they knew. Even a top insurgent commander in the war said to me, Michael, I'm, we're not the ones I'm worried about, it's our children. We now have two or three generations who have grown up bathed in blood and violence. Yeah, and when you think about connecting the dots here, I mean, we look at Brussels or we look at Paris and we say, how did this happen? And then we go walk to Molenbeek and we say, well, the third generation of these folks are marginalized, but um, it's hard to imagine us being where we are now without that first domino of the Iraq war. Of course not. That was the genesis. And in the film, you will see the yes. birth of the Islamic State. I witnessed it. I went to one of the first Islamic State training camps that there ever was. So I've seen inside this beast. And what we're seeing now being exported to the West, it's, it, you know, this is the Islamic State trying to project its threat from beyond its own borders. I'm telling you, I've seen it all before.